Thank you. It's so good to be here. Listen, I need to break the news to you guys, okay? It's not you, it's me, okay? I'm just too busy these days. I'm not over my ex. I really, really like you, but... <laughs> now, if you don't know, I just broke up with all of you guys. <laughs> um, and I'm sure you've used these same excuses before to break up with other people. Uh, before I talk about my own dating woes and my social experiment and blog, 40 Days of Dating, I have a disclaimer. First, I am not a scientist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a researcher or an analyst. I'm not even a dating expert, okay? I'm really, I'm just a dude going through life like any of you guys with a blindfold over his, I mean, you guys aren't dudes, not all of you. Uh, just a dude going through life with a blindfold over his head, just like any of you. I'm a graphic designer by trade, uh, and I think as a designer, we have unique abilities to share stories in ways that haven't been told before. Um, and so I'm interested in my own vulnerability. I'm interested in sharing that with an audience. I'm interested in tapping in to the human experience through my work. And where better to start than with love and dating and relationships? Uh, of course we know love is a central theme across all humanity. It's from the Bible to the fact that Phil Collins has sold over 100 million albums singing about heartbreak. <laughs> that my mom has all the albums. <laughs> but what is it and why do we go crazy for this so much? And me personally, I live in New York City, a place that is even particularly more difficult to date. There's always someone seemingly more interested around the corner. Um, but before we go forward, let's have a little context. In the history of dating, way back, of course, God creates Adam, the rest is history. 1491, the first recorded marriage happens in ancient Egypt. And then for about 500 years, nothing really interesting to me. Uh, rotary dial service happens in 1927. Men start calling women on the phone. And then a pivotal moment in dating history. Barry White is born in 1944. More babies are conceived to songs like Can't Get Enough of Your Love, Babe. So, <laughs> note, note that. 1950s, the rise of the automobile. Dating becomes much more popular. 1965, the first dating show happens on ABC, The Dating Game. 1999, text can finally be exchanged and you all start sexting each other. 2004, OkCupid okay, has launched, and basically all my friends start getting married because of it. And then in 2013, Jessica Walsh, my good friend and partner, and I launched 40 Days of Dating. So what the hell is 40 Days of Dating, and who are we? Well, here we are having a photograph taken of us taking selfies of ourselves. We are the selfie generation. We are the internet age generation. We are the TMI generation. And we've also been really, really good friends for the last eight years. We graduated at the same time, came up together, and we always bonded because of our opposite relationship problems. Maybe you knew someone like me, commitment phobes, scared of relationships, forgetting all about what a healthy relationship means. Jessica, the complete opposite of me. Serial monogamous, tired of dating, loves love, consequently screws up her relationships. Uh, so it was on a, we were on a trip with a group of friends to Miami Art Basel in early 2013 that we came up with this crazy idea to date each other. Uh, and of course they say it takes 40 days to change a bad habit, so we thought that was a good place to start. Um, we, we both found ourselves single at that same time and we were kind of really going through our own trials and tribulations with dating and so we said, what the hell, let's do this. And we came to a fundamental question with this, why? And I think all good projects or experiments or anything in life starts with this question of why. Why are, why are we like this? Why do we have these issues with relationships? Why can't we change? And so this really was the basis for the entire thing. Of course, we needed a set of rules if we were gonna tr treat this as a true experiment. We needed rules to hold us accountable, to actually follow through. We needed rules to keep us emotionally invested. So we came up with six rules that were really the basis for the entire project. Number one, we see each other every single day. Number two, we go on three dates a week. Number three, we see a couple's therapist together weekly, which is kind of insane. <laughs> Number four, we go on a weekend trip together. 
Number five, we fill out the daily questionnaire, which is these eight questions that we had to answer every single day, which really was the foundation for everything. Did you see Jessica today? What did you guys do? Did you learn anything new about yourself? So on and so forth. And number six, uh, we agreed we wouldn't see, date, hook up, have sex with anyone else. No rules that she and I had to. That was just the, you, you, we couldn't do it with anyone else. So I'm going to cut the suspense for anyone who hasn't seen this project or read it. We did not end up together after day 40. We broke up in Disney World on our weekend trip. <laughs> and like many dating scenarios, it was a bit painful and difficult process. But what we learned was tremendous. Uh, we were able to work on our dating difficulties and deficiencies in real life, in real time, with each other, with the therapist. And that, more than anything, was uh, more valuable than what we could have hoped for. And we also did a projects and experiments within the experiment. For instance, on day five, we did art therapy, which comes very natural to us as designers and illustrators, exploring past relationships. Day 28, we asked college students, we took a survey about what relationships mean to them. As you can see, very colorful responses. Day 32, we held hands together for eight hours straight and, and, and documented the whole thing on video. Um, yes, we, we, didn't, we never let go. Uh, yes, we went to the bathroom together. No, we didn't do number two. Um, and day 38, 39, 40, we went to Disney World where dreams apparently went to die because we broke up. <laughs> so we finished the project, the experiment, around, uh, it was April 30th, 2013. And then we didn't launch it on the website until July 10th, 2013. So there are a couple months there where we were trying to, we actually in the beginning we were like, are we actually gonna release this to the world? And we read the first couple journal entries that we wrote and we said, wow, this is interesting, let's do it. So it took us a couple months to put the website together, make, get all the content. And a lot of people ask us, well, why would you put this out to the public? You know? And as you see the way we designed the website, Jessica's on the left, I'm on the right for each day. The same questions apply, and the reason we wanted to put it out is because you can see how me and Jessica, a man and a woman, can interpret one experience wildly differently. And that really was the basis for the whole project, we believe. And of course, we peppered the entire website with images and, and photos of ourselves, gifts we gave each other, um, text messages between us, all as a vehicle to help tell the story in a rich way. Uh, a lot of animated gifts and illustrations. And what happened next is it went completely viral. I mean, I thought like maybe my mom would read it and you know, my, an ex-girlfriend or something. Um, <laughs> but we found ourselves in a media onslaught, over 15 million unique visitors so far, and over 50 million visits. So it was pretty wild. And like I said, we found ourselves in this media storm, people interviewing us and uh, profiling us on uh, the likes of Time Magazine, the BBC, to CNN. We were on the NBC Today Show with Matt Lauer. It was pretty wild to see. And thousands of emails and messages on the internet, people from all over the world writing us, telling us how much they love us or how much they hate us, or what we should do differently. It was pretty remarkable to see. And, and we realized, you know, obviously people love a good dating story, and we all like to be voyeuristic, but I think people really could see themselves in us because we've all been through bad dating scenarios and we've all been, been heartbroken or been in love. And so everyone had an opinion about it. It was really interesting. And I love this quote, if no one hates it, no one really loves it by graphic designer T. Burke Hallman. Because while well, obviously we got a lot of attention and a lot of love, you know, it was a very polarizing project and so, a lot of, some people didn't like it, they hated it. Um, and I think that those responses are just as valuable too. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of my favorite hate tweets. I wish I could express how much I hate the people in 40 Days of Dating. They are the worst people in the world. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite. This girl wrote this on Valentine's Day. She said, I really hope that the people from 40 Days of Dating get diarrhea today. <laughs> this person, uh, not so lighthearted. 40 Days of Dating is the most evil project in the world easily. Makes me understand the death penalty. <laughs> so we've heard it all. Uh, while we were caught in this media onslaught, uh, we were also getting 
emails and attention from people in Hollywood like crazy, producers, directors, agents, all coming at us saying, we want to take your, your story, your intellectual property all of a sudden. We want to take this and make it a movie or make it a TV show or make it an unscripted, rea unscripted reality show or make it a book, a Broadway play. It was pretty remarkable. And we actually ended up uh, optioning. We haven't sold anything, but we optioned the, story, the rights to our story to Warner Brothers. And we work with a great screenwriter, Lorene Scafaria, who, has, who developed the script. Um, since then, we've actually optioned it to a new studio, STX, and crossing our fingers that a movie might get made pretty soon, actually. Um, no, no cast has been, no one's been cast yet, but I'm also praying, hoping, crossing my fingers that someone like Michael Sarah will play me or something. Um, <laughs> Or, or Jamie Foxx. You know, I'll take two different movies. I'll take both. Uh, the other great thing that came from this is that we wrote and designed a book that came out with Abrams last year. Uh, the book obviously showcases everything from the blog, but all new content as well. I'm going to show you this book in a 15-second Instagram clip here, if it plays. And guys, let me tell you, so many fans of the book. I mean, you really get to go out and buy it. The Beatles, <laughs> Mr. T, I mean, go buy the book. My girl, Marilyn, <laughs> such an honor. Note to self, make less pretty crap, make more stuff with heart and soul and voice and meaning. This is something Jessica and I, because of this experience, have really taken to heart and really want to apply co to continue to do with our own work. You know, for centuries, filmmakers and artists and writers have been putting their lives and their fears and their habits in their work. But you, we don't see that a lot in the graphic design community, and both she and I are really interested in exploring that because, like I said earlier, I think we have unique abilities to kind of tell these stories in ways that the public hasn't seen. Uh, and we've continued to this in this fashion. In the last year and a half, we worked on an entirely new, robust social experiment called 12 Kinds of Kindness. We actually just released it in January, and it finished uh, last month. It's kind of a 12-step program we designed for our own selfishness and apathy and why we have it and why we don't have it for other people. And we kind of explored all these different topics, personal topics such as fatherlessness and mental health and bystander apathy. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick clip of this as well. Just an Instagram clip. I want to know if I can help you with anything. I just want to give you money. The opposite of what we thought was going to happen happened. This is literally insane. It just seems so simple to some people. Oh, I just feel so nerve-wracking. So you can check that out at 12kindsofkindness.com. Finally, I just want to end with a, this great quote from Lena Dunham, and I'm paraphrasing her, but she said something along the lines that sharing your personal stories is a sort of activism. By sharing what's personal to you, you're connecting to other lonely people in the world, and I truly believe that, and both Jessica and I are going to continue to kind of make this work and put this in the world and try to connect to people and start these dialogues that we feel is important. So we really feel that all of life is an experiment.